Welcome back. As part of our commitment to digging deeper into stories that matter to you, we are speaking with local community leaders after the guilty verdict that was announced today. And joining us now is the president of the local NAACP chapter, Patrick Jackson. And Patrick, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I want to first start off by asking you, do you think the jury got this verdict right? Yes, the jury definitely got the verdict correct in um, this, this case. And how do you think this trial has impacted the black community, not just on a national level, but obviously right here in Kern County as well? Do you think there's been any impacts? I don't think it's much of an impact um, at all. I think the families of like the De La Rosa family, the, the Hargrove family, the David Turner family, the David Silva family don't see this as a turning point. It's great that justice was had, but actual change um, within departments is going to take a lot more work as um, far as legislation and consequences are concerned um, throughout the ranks. And so talking about police reform, what specific actions and policies do you feel need to be changing specifically here in our own community? Um, definitely um, our police departments, our sheriff department supporting uh, policy change like qualified immunity, um, just like when they support issues uh, when they need funding for more officers or more police cars and things of that sort. Us as a community having this, this riff, understanding that um, bad officers are hiding behind these laws um, in the community, not feeling safe, even coming forth on issues, coming to internal affairs and so on and so forth. Um, supporting policy change is essential. And the police unions, um, they don't support those type of policy changes um, that have been brought forth um, thus far. And do you think there needs to be more diversity on the police force, whether it's the sheriff's office or the Bakersfield Police Department? I think when we start to go down that road, I think we, we try start to change the narrative of what really needs to happen. Um, you can put more officers in those positions. Of course, we don't have enough um, uh, minorities to go into a lot of these different fields that are comfortable in the first place. So once we get the laws in place, I think people will feel more comfortable um, going into um, law enforcement when it comes to diversifying individuals on the force. But we've seen time and time again, and I've talked to a lot of former um, officers and people that are still on the force um, that feel as though they go in wanting to create change and find out that the system is much more tougher than they thought. And as a local leader, last question here, I wanna ask you, where do we start? Okay, the verdict came down. Where do we start in actually building trust in our community with law enforcement, with you know different communities of color? Where do we start the next day when we all wake up tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, I think that law enforcement have to take an initiative to support these bills that needs to be changed. If they're going to support um, qualified immunity um, being um, reformed, um, supporting the police officer right bill being reformed, that will be the step in the right direction. If they're going to make that move, if they are wanting to create real change and build a relationship, that has to be their first step in doing that. If that's not, if they want to do a bunch of other things, it's going to it's going to be a long road ahead of us of a bunch of talking conjecture and things that are not going to create systemic change. All right, Patrick, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you.